What's up fam? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Natalie Rose and this is my channel, Music to Makeup. We're talking about everything from music to makeup. So I have been wanting to do a book reviews for a while, but I don't know, I was just kind of including them in my favorites, but then I would talk so long about the book because I would be really, you know, passionate and there's a lot of things I wanted to touch on and then my favorites video would be so long so I would end up editing out almost everything I said and reading is just a big part of my life in general so I'm like I might as well be doing reviews of the books that I really really enjoy so maybe it can you know inspire someone else to want to read the same book and hopefully they will get as much out of it as I did so first let's say this if you like these types of videos please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel before you leave so the book I am going to be reviewing is it is the book of rhymes the po poetics of hip-hop by Adam Bradley but before I get into the review I do want to do a little giveaway so when I ordered this book I ordered two books we actually ordered three I got two of the same one and it is this rap yearbook so it says the most important rap song from every year since 1979 discussed debated and deconstructed and it's this is an amazing book oh, but then they have juicy that's definitely classic in the club 50 cent Best I ever had. Break. But so all you have to do is be subscribed to my channel and leave a comment in the comments below and I will send you this really awesome book. Okay, so the book of rhymes, the poetic of hip hop by Adam Brat. So I used to write a lot of poetry and I've just always been a very good writer. And on top of that, I love music, especially hip hop. So I'm like the best of both worlds. Like I could write and like make music that I, cause music is everything to me. So, but when I saw this and it talked about how it can kind of re, it talks about how rap is our modern day poetry. I was very intrigued. So I wanted to see how me having a past in poetry could help my aspirations of becoming an MC and, and writing. So it doesn't go into specific songwriting techniques, but it does briefly, you know, touch on different techniques that are used. So this book would be good for if you're a fan of poetry and rap music and uh, would like to learn like the more te technical aspect of hip-hop music and what I really like about this author is he uses examples from songs from all different kinds of artists you know he'll have he has Eminem he has Tupac he has Biggie he has Mel Mel he has Lauren Hill um, Eminem I don't know if I said him Jay-Z he has almost everyone he uses examples of their lyrics or their songs Kanye so I really like how if you're someone who's like trying or you you know you want to learn more about the history of hip hop and like classic like really good songs this would be another good way to do that because every song if you like downloaded every song that he mentioned in here you that would be a great playlist of like hip hop history so another reason that you might want to read this book is if you are in a inspiring MC or poet and you're interested in becoming an MC and seeing how they have some relation. So let me just give you the brief synopsis of it. It's, if asked to list the greatest innovators, innovators of modern American poetry, few of us would think to include Jay-Z or Eminem in their number. And yet hip-hop is the source of some of the most exciting developments in verse today. The media uproar in response to its controversial lyric content, content has obscured 
hip-hop revolutions of poetic craft and experience. Only in rap music can the beat of a song render poetic meter audible, allowing an MC's wordplay to move a club full of eager listeners. Examining rap's history's most memorable lyricist and their inimitable techniques in Literally scholar Adam Bradley argues that we must understand rap as poetry or miss the vanguard of poetry today. Book of Rhymes explores America's least understood poets, unpacking their surprisingly complex craft and according rap poetry the respect it deserves. The way the book is, um, is broken down is the first two, there's Rap Poetry 101 and Rap Poetry 201. And then in part one, it goes to rhythm. It talks about rhythm. Okay, so let me go to some of my bookmarks. All right, so let me take a second to talk about Eminem. When I heard Eminem, I was hooked. Every weekend when we would, you know, hang out, the first song I would always play was my absolute favorite, and it is Drug Ballad. And back then, I, you know, I didn't understand how technical Eminem was. I mean, I did, but I not to the level. I didn't realize it to the level that he really is. Not, not until I started really studying hip hop and studying his work was I able to really see how intentional so many things were and recognize so many, like all of the techniques he used. So, but that was my favorite song. I didn't know why. And he talks about the song in, in rhythm. And let me read what it says. Okay. Charting the number of syllables in the lines of a given rap verse is a useful technique. By doing so, one notices patterns of repetition and difference. In the lines that follow, Eminem creates a syllabic pattern of around 10 syllables, which he then disrupts by expanding the number of sil syllables to nearly double by the end. Drug Ballad, from which these lines are drawn, is a study in breath control and lyrical artistry at the microscopic level of syllable. So his very first sentence, or his very first bar is nine syllables, and then the very last one, it is 17 syllables. So, and I'm going to play it for you. Hold on one second. That was one of the nights. Oh my God, I just realized how much they both look like Eminem. Like, That is Okay. But, and then he says, to perform this last line without breaking his flow, Eminem increases the tempo of his delivery and alters his prosody, his pitch, length, timber, and so on. You know, I think that rap is still so new in its, you know, in its existence. It's, and he even says it in here, it's like an adolescent. And I think it has so much more growing to do. We go through a big transformation. And I think one of the things that does need to happen is I think there need to be more women in this. It's the only genre of music that is male dominated. And, you know, I think it's our responsibility to, to you know, speak up for, I don't have any children, but I, you know, I, You know, these squirrels jump on the window like they think they, they're not going to kill themselves, but they do. <laughs> I don't know.
Why, what was I saying? I have no clue what I was saying now. Oh, I don't have any children, but I do not want, I would like to one day, but I don't want to have a child that is going to grow up in a society where, you know, they listen to certain things, certain misogynistic lyrics, and think that's acceptable, and think that's the way that they're supposed to be treated, because that's not. Okay, so then the next um, chapter is on style. And then it says, all artists must face up to Kanye's dilemma at some point in their development. How to craft an individual voice out of the myriad influences available. This is the definition of personal style. And then, okay, this I completely agree with. It says, style often starts as a form of envy. Someone does something that you want to do, but you don't know how to do it, and it motivates you to figure it out. You begin to build this body of influences until you have a particular blend that is distinctly your own. And then it does say, no style is completely original. Certainly there's a sliding scale of originality that stretches from the completely copied to the wholly original. Most artists reside in between. Shifting along the axis at different points in their career, even at different points in particular rhymes. And it, it, then it goes on to talk about how um, the first album that Eminem recorded, he said everyone was telling him that he sounded like Nas. Here it is. When Eminem released his independent debut album, Infinite, in 1996, the few critics who heard it accused him of biting the styles of other artists, most notably Nas. Eminem admits as much and looks back on the album as a crucial step in his stylistic development. Obviously, I was young and influenced by other artists, he recalls, and I got a lot of feedback saying that I sounded like Nas and AZ. Infinite was trying to figure out how I wanted my rap style to be, how I wanted to sound on the mic and present myself. It was a growing stage. Eminem's remarks key into the essential elements of style, the qualities of voice, or as he puts it, how I wanted to sound on the mic, and the formation of persona, or how he wanted to present himself. With that, I completely agree with that. And... If you are someone who's having difficulty trying to figure out what you want to do in life, think about someone you're jealous of. And I remember I used to hate Nicki Minaj and I never, you know, wanted to face the reason why. And then once I was doing a lot of self-discovery and those feelings came up again, I was like, Natalie, I was more self-aware. I'm like, Natalie, why are you feeling these feelings of jealousy towards her? And I, I finally figured out that it was because I was jealous that she had the courage to do something I really wanted to do, but I did not have the courage to do. So once I finally recognized that, I realized that I was jealous because I wanted to be doing what she was doing. She uses a lot, a lot of examples of lyrics from, you know, amazing songs. Like, this one is from Big Papa, you know. Then there's the Begin to Talk Debate in here. And it's just a really, really interesting book. More about the poetics of hip hop. But it was $16.99. And don't forget to subscribe and comment to win this book. I will put all the information in the description bar below of when I will pick the winner and all the rules. It's going to be US only. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys later.